What's going on, everyone? <laughs> Welcome to AWS reInvent 2024. My name is Aaron Hunter. I'm a principal developer advocate on the AWS Training Live team. And I'm joined here with my good friend, Ivan, and we're gonna to talk to you about the AWS Certified Machine Learning Engineer Associate Certification and how you can prepare for that exam. Ivan? Uh, my name is Ivan. Uh, I'm a senior technical trainer with uh, AWS, and uh, I'll be joining Aaron here to talk about the ML Engineer Associate exam. Now, this isn't the only session that we have because we've done quite a few things in the past. We have AWS Power Hour, we have the four-step plan. Um, should we bring some of those resources up and show people like I first? I think we should. Okay, like what is the exam? Yeah. How do they prepare for it? What are the resources? And a question that we can actually go through and justify why the answers are correct and incorrect. Yes, yes. let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. All in 20 minutes. <laughs> All in 20 minutes. We can do it. So with the Apple Engineer Associates uh, exam, uh, there are uh, four steps that you can complete to uh, get this exam uh, done. Uh, 130 minutes, 65 questions to complete the exam. Uh, and uh, there are four steps to the preparation, Aaron. So would you like to walk us through the four steps? Sure. Step number one, get to know the exam and the exam style questions. That's <laughs> what I'm supposed to say up there. Step number two, refresh your AWS knowledge and skills. Really good to do that with some uh, hands-on practice. And that's what Absolutely. I recommend. So that way you can actually reinforce that information that you're learning. I agree. Yeah. And then step three, review and practice. So you go through step two, you get that hands-on experience, maybe do some labs. We have builder labs that can help you with that. That's right. We also have cloud quests that can help with that too. And we'll, we'll show some of those options here in the four step plan. And then step number four is to assess your exam readiness with the official practice quiz or practice exam. Absolutely. So should we take a look at the skill builder resources for the four step plan? No. Available? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look at that uh, next. So if, when you navigate to the skill builder, uh, you can simply click on the, uh, in step number one, uh, follow the four step plan. It's gonna take you directly to the skill builder uh, focused on this exam. And this is where you're going to find various resources associated with the four uh, steps. The uh, resources like the practice question set exactly. that we're gonna cover just a bit. That's right. Um, cloud Quest is on there. That's right. Okay, uh, Builder Labs is on there? Yep, various so, labs, built-in labs. Yeah, yep. experience, cool. Yep, that's right. Uh, and uh, we can see that the uh, the content is segmented uh, by the four steps. So step number one, there's a variety of things uh, we can complete here, such as get to know the exam. There's also uh, under the step two, a variety of uh, courses that people can complete to get familiarized with different topics, like how to collect, ingest, and uh, store data as an example, or how to transform the data and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, as you can see, I keep scrolling, there's quite a bit of a content here, Aaron. So there there's is. no shortage of things that you can use to prepare for uh, this uh, for this exam. Let's see the right hand side, it even has like the pricing too. Is it paid or is it free? And exactly. how, long I, how long I should take to That's uh, right. learn, cool. That's right, and we can also see the uh, the level of uh, difficulty, if you will, how deep uh, these courses go, fundamental level, advanced, intermediate, so you could kind of know what to expect. I have a question for the chat, these. Ivan, and a question for you. So sure. a question for the chat, are you fundamental, are you advanced, are you intermediate? Let us know what your skill level is with the Machine Learning Engineer Associate preparation. And Ivan, are you, would you say you're fundamental? I would say I'm intermediate to Inter advanced. Okay, okay. Yeah. So how about you, Aaron? I would say I'm fundamental to intermediate. So okay. I, I always have room to learn and room to grow. That's right. Yeah. Everyone does. Yeah. Everyone does. <laughs> Speaking of learning, we did the pretty interesting uh, Power Hour we did. earlier this year. Yes, yes. It had six episodes. Uh, that's something that uh, you folks can also check out to familiarize with these topics in a bit more depth. Uh, hang out with Aaron, myself, and our friend uh, John Dion. Uh, so would you like to tell us a little bit more about what we've done there, Aaron? Yeah. So like you mentioned, there's six different episodes. We can see here there's the AWS Power Hour ML Engineer Associate. Episode one, we did a really good job of breaking down the exam introduction, the domains. Really, we kind of went through the exam guide That's and right. used that to guide the episode. And then we dove deep into every single domain with the the, question, the uh, episodes right after that. So episode two is focused on domain one, episode three, domain two, episode four, domain five and, and math, carry the one, do all the things. And then we can scroll all the way down and see we finally had episode six and episode six was review and practice where we did several questions. That's right. Now, what are those questions? How do we get to them? Or should we maybe cover the exam guide first? Let's talk about the exam okay. guide first. And just to add to what Aaron has just said, all these episodes are available on demand. You can watch them at any point. Wait, you like. they are? 
They are. That's brand new info to me. That is that is right, Aaron. Word. Cool. <laughs> Sweet. When it comes to the exam, why don't we check, uh, talk about uh, what is uh, on the exam next. If you navigate to the exam guide, you'll find all the details associated with this exam in terms of how many questions are there, how much time you have, the types of questions. Something that's interesting about the types of questions is there's yeah. some new types of questions compared there to are. earlier exams. And if you scroll down to a uh, third page in the exam guide, what are those new questions, Aaron? So everyone who may have taken an AWS certification before this year may already know that there's the multiple choice options where there's one correct option out That's of right. like four responses. Um, and then there's multiple response typically, which you have four, well, actually you have five or six. Wait, hold on. Five, six. Yeah, five or, five or six, six response options. That's right. And either two or three of those are correct. That's right. That, that's something that like everyone kind of already knows if you've taken an AWS certification in the past. That's However, right. the new ones are fun. They are. I actually have a lot of fun answering them. So there's the ordering, which has a list of three to five responses. You can see it here on the screen. Um, and then to complete a specified task. Mm -hmm. Now, there's matching, which has a list of responses to match to three or seven prompts. Right. Those two are great. Personal opinion, personal favorite is actually the case study. Okay, and why the, is that? So the case study itself, well, I'm gonna ask you like, what's your favorite? And then I'll answer why. <laughs> <laughs> Get some time to think, smart. <laughs> no, uh, no, my, I, I have my, an answer. <laughs> my favorite is ordering. Uh, okay. I like to have things in order. I like to bring chaos into order. So okay. I think the ordering is my favorite one. Okay. And you get to align things in the natural set of steps that you typically take to complete some process. Uh, I don't know, it is really satisfying. Got what it. is case study your favorite? Well, before I answer that, it's one more thing, one more question for the chat. Let us know what your favorite might be for ordering, matching, or case study for these new question types. But the reason why the case study is my favorite is because it spans multiple questions based on one scenario, based on one case study, and then you're answering that. And then those are counted as independent questions and answers and responses toward your overall score. So it kind of feels like a real world use case. You're presented yeah. with a scenario, then you have maybe several exactly. questions about a single case study. Exactly. I see your point of view. Yeah. You know? Now, I wonder if anyone in the chat said ordering, because you said matching. No, you said yeah, ordering. I said ordering. And so I wonder if anyone in the chat said matching. Yep. I'm going to see if I can pull it up here, but let's go ahead and jump directly over from the exam guide and show people maybe some of these new questions if we can get exactly. lucky. If we'll you see. can get lucky. So where can we find these questions? We'll find these questions in the AWS uh, Skill Builder. Uh, if you Do navigate, I have to search for it? You can search for the exam prep. Okay. Official that seems like a lot of work. Is there an easier way for me to find this information? It, it is available. It is linked within the uh, four-step plan. No Makes way. It very easy to navigate there as well. So the no four-step plan we reviewed earlier, direct connection there. Amazing. And as we can <laughs> see, this is free. This product is free. You can access these questions to get a bit more understanding of what these exam style questions uh, typically are, what is their style, and also get some some experience of navigating through the questions under maybe the time pressure of uh, trying to work through those uh, questions. This product is free. You can navigate to Skill Builder for, from the four-step plan and uh, access, choose to enroll hey, Ivan. into the product. I'm going to interrupt for a second. Go for I'm, it. I'm watching the chat right now. And? The chat has a really cool, so Tripolista. I don't know what that stands for. I hope I pronounced it right. But Tripolista <laughs> says, working on the exam by the mid or end of December. That's Amazing. This, that's this month. You got it. Yeah, that, that's yeah. this month. And uh, this also qualifies you for, for the early uh, adopter badge. The early adopter badge. That's and right. then um, the 50% off. Because as well. the associate challenge. Yes, because the associate We're, challenge. So definitely get it done yeah. by the uh, mid December. Yeah. yeah. I think we have Trevor in the chat. Okay. So hopefully Trevor can drop that link. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully. Trevor, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. So once you enroll into this product, uh, you're going to find that there is. And there's going to be a start here button, very intuitive uh, for you to get started with this uh, product, at which point you're going to be presented with uh, the history of how you did on these questions. Uh, you can see I've completed uh, one of these um, with a 70% pass rate. There's 20 questions That means you have room available. for improvement. That is true. Can, that you go, is true. can you go back and review those questions after you completed it? Yeah, you can go okay. and review the questions. Okay. You have ability to see how you did. You get to see the rationales for why every single question was right, including links where you can go read up more and there's different features and services. Uh, but you know what you can also do, Aaron? You can reset the product. Why would you want to do that? So you can take the test again. 
You can take it again. Yeah, you Does can it take cost it you again. anything? No, it doesn't cost you anything. It's free. Can you take it just one more time? Yeah, you can take it five more times. 50 more times? 100 more times. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so are we going to reset? All right, reset it <laughs> so we can take a look at uh, what these questions look like. So confirm uh, reset. And uh, at uh, this point in time, we're going to take a look at uh, one of these questions. So let's uh, choose to see more and uh, we can choose a start. So you can see here uh, that aside from the number of questions that we're working through, there's also some other statistics that are pretty useful, pretty handy, yeah. uh, such as the average answer time. So, like how long you spend on a question. Exactly, okay. so if you if you notice that your average answer time is, is relatively high, you're probably not gonna have enough time to get through all 65 questions of the exam. Kind of goes back to like some exam taking tips that we did during the AWS Power Hour, which like one of them is two minutes per question. Yeah, and kind of keep get that pace. quick. Yeah. yeah, try to get quick, more questions that you're unsure of, you can always come back if you have more time yep. uh, to get those done. So shall we take a look at what uh, the first question is? Absolutely. All right, All right let's select uh, start. And we're going to choose to start with the first question. So what is the first question, Aaron? The first question reads, a financial services company used an Amazon SageMaker endpoint to deploy an ML model. The model automates loan risk assessment and personal loan approval. The model currently puts twice as much weight on personal income than on the length of credit history of an applicant when generating risk rating and making loan approval decision. Mm. That's a lot to digest and understand. It is. it is. These questions can be long. It, it yes. is, yeah, yeah. So, but here's like one of the key points of the question because like you're fully understanding what the question's asking by saying That's right. a data scientist wants to deploy the, a mechanism that alerts if the model in production begins to place more emphasis on length of credit history than on personal income. So in other words, this is switched. It's different from what it was during yeah. the training phase. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So which solution will meet these requirements? And we have these four different options here. And this is the the same type of question where it's just multiple choice. Exactly. It's a yeah. multiple choice. Yes. Yes. That's right. So there are four offered answers, uh, create a bias uh, drift baseline by using the model bias monitor class, uh, and then deploy the baseline to SageMaker model monitor, periodically check for bias drift and capture violations, uh, configure alerts in Amazon CloudWatch to send notifications. So see, it's, it's actually walking you through the entire end-to-end -end solution on yeah. how to set this up but we still don't know if this is the right answer. Actually, you know what? I wonder, because we have people watching from the chat, and I see them, I see them typing questions. Yeah, let us know we'll, we'll, chat. Come, we'll come back to that. Well, I see your questions, but I see your comments. Let us know what your guess is for which one of these yes. four options is correct as we continue reading and talking about it. Because uh, I see you, Go Guppy. I see you, Robert Table. I see you, Jib Jab. I see you, George MCK. All right. So let us know in the chat uh, what you think the right answer is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What are people saying? Well, right any now, early votes? No early votes so far, but I see okay. some really cool hints and tips for taking the okay. exam. Yeah. Okay. So, question, excellent. Response option number B says create a data quality baseline by using the default model monitor class and deploy the baseline as to, to SageMaker model monitor. <laughs> Periodically <laughs> check for data drift and capture violations. Configure alerts in Amazon CloudWatch to send notifications. And I like that because it does mention alerts in the response. That's right. And we see that like the the second to the last sentence says a data scientist wants to deploy a mechanism that alerts. Yes. So I'm liking that so far. That's including, yeah, that, that, okay. that requirement is there. How about number C, create a SHAP baseline by using the model explainability monitor class, deploy the baseline to SageMaker model monitor, periodically check for feature attribution drift and capture violations, configure alerts in Amazon CloudWatch to send up notifications. This one also includes alerts. It does also say alerts. I like yep. that one. I'm gonna, but let's let's kind of skim through these yep. and we'll take a look at D real quick. So can you okay. read D for me? And then does, yeah. it say, does it say alerts? So D, <laughs> <laughs> D is going to be focusing uh, on, uh, it does include uh, send notifications. Okay. But something I noticed, Aaron, is that the beginning of each of these responses is focusing on different types of monitoring. In fact, yeah. with the SageMaker Clarify, you can do four different types of monitoring. And in fact, you see those four types listed here. You can monitor for bias, you can monitor for data quality, monitor for uh, feature attribution, which is where yeah. we use Shapley values. Yeah. Uh, and you can also monitor for model quality. And they all, all four talk about alerts, by the way. So we can't That's use right. that as like a, a filtering no. factor. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we have four options presented that SageMaker Clarify can monitor for, uh, it, it really helps understand what is the challenge that is being explained in the STEM yeah. in this situation in order says, to 
point us to the right answer. Absolutely. Okay. And I see it's like the model currently puts twice as much weight on personal income than on the length of credit history. That would you they, say it's attributing? Would you say it's attributing more? I, I, to I it? would I would say that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What does the chat think? How are so they the, voting? The chat is thinking A. So a? the model, so if you can scroll up, create a bias drift bias. baseline by using the model bias monitor class, deploy okay. the baseline to SageMaker model monitor, periodically check for bias drift and capture violations, configure alerts and Amazon CloudWatch to send notifications. I think no matter what we think, we should go with the chat. Okay. The chat Let's go with a? the chat. Because you know what's cool about this? It's not like an actual exam. It's not. You don't have pressure to have no. to get it right. It's no. about learning. Because if you get it wrong, it's going to help you. Let's say exactly. if you got it right or wrong. Actually, if you get it right, yeah. it still it, helps you. In fact, when you get something wrong, you oftentimes learn more. What did you say? You're not getting it wrong. Yeah. You're getting another chance to learn. That's right, because okay. you can reset the product. You can right. run it again. And I see, I see more A's coming through. Okay. All right. All right. That is oh, actually that is not incorrect. incorrect. Okay. So the right answer is C. And what tells us that the right answer is C from the stem is that the there's the more of the attribution to a given feature that the model is applying in production yeah. compared to what we've seen in the training. And what we use to how measure do you know, how do you know attribution. Model, how do you know it's C? We, we, don't, we don't see that. Oh, wait, never mind. It says on the bottom. Correct exactly. answer Exactly. It says on the bottom. <laughs> so when the model attributes much more weight to particular features in production compared to what it did during training. Yeah. We call that feature attribution drift. Got it. And we use Shapley values to measure the attribution for different features. I learned something new just now. Thank you so much, Ivan. You're welcome, Eric. Yeah. And you know what? I see ABS on air said a chance to learn to DJ my man Eric because DJ my man Eric said D E F A or C. So hey, D yeah. DJ my man Eric. That's you got, how you, you get got it. You got it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if we scroll down, well, we can see here, like, on A, that was our guess. Yes. And it's giving us some links. So if we click on That's the link, right. it'll talk about how to monitor for bias drift. Mm -hmm. It'll talk about learning more for the model bias monitor class. But yes. the correct answer is what we also want to learn, not just the correct answer, why the incorrect answer is incorrect. Yes. So we have three links here. We can click on each of those. We can learn more about it. We only covered one question, but how many more? There's 19. There's 19 more. And as you can folks, as you can see, folks, uh, there's a pretty standard structure to these uh, rationales. Yes. First, it's going to say whether the answer is right or wrong. So here it says correct. And then it goes on to, ex to explain a particular service that is being mentioned. And then it explains why that feature or service right. is right or not and it provides reference. It's really helpful. So you can expect that to see with the remaining 19 questions as well. So we can, we don't have time to go through all 19 questions. So that's what each of you should do. Go ahead and click the link that we have in the chat. Um, go through the practice question set because it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything. It's free. Yeah. It costs time. You can do it more if you want to. You can do it once. You can do it five times. I even said you can do it 50 times. That's cool. 100 times. 100, 100 times. Just don't memorize what's happening here. Like Try to really understand why it's correct, why it isn't correct. Go through the four-step plan. If you can bring that, bring that back up, Ivan. Um, go through that four-step plan. And after you're done with the step one, because this practice question set is in step one, you can go into step two. And what's in step two, Ivan? Uh, so step two, refresh your ABS knowledge and skills. If we pull That's the right. plan itself up. Yeah, so if you pull the plan itself up, there's quite a bit of courses you can complete. Some are gamified approaches to learning, like yeah. CloudQuest. Some are uh, actual courses with sometimes an instructor on camera also yeah. talking to you. And uh, there's a lot of valuable resources you can go up and read up on. Exactly. And special thanks to everyone in the chat to the AWS On Air team, to the exam prep team, and to everyone here live at AWS reInvent, and also to all our friends behind the cameras, and all, all of right. you watching live. Thank you, crew. Thank you, all of you. So Thank you. We, we will see each of you next with AWS On Air. Complete the survey. We'll have a link in the chat. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Aaron. Stay tuned, everyone, for more Stay live tuned. from AWS reInvent 2024 in Las Vegas.